Hello, my name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I want to start off by thanking all the subscribers. We're over 212 subscribers. In a previous video, I had mentioned that I was looking to get 1,000 by my birthday, which is the first week of March. So if you're watching this, please hit subscribe over here, and I'll really appreciate it. It would be a great birthday gift. Um, also, to shorten up the segments, I included an About Me uh, little video there that you can watch at your own leisure. And today, what we're going to be talking about is relative durations for SLAs. So, um, we want to create an SLA. Let's just say that's our user requirement. And we want to have something where user requirement will probably be listed as well. We want it um, completed seven business days. Um, after the request is submitted by 5 p.m. Um, if it's in before 12 p.m. or something like that, right? So sometimes you get user requirements like that. Um, so I created one um, that's called that exactly. Um, out of the box, ServiceNow is going to give you a couple of these like end of next business day, three business days, two business days, etc. So um, you have something to work with. As you can see, I've done quite a bit of testing here over the last couple of months using relative durations. Um, I don't really have an opinion on it, but I prefer not to use them. And I'm going to show you why. So um, in the next uh, tab, when we move over to here. So uh, let's take a look at this one. Um, seven business days by 5 p.m. if it's submitted before 12. Um, so right here, you're going to have this variable days equals seven. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I don't like um, using relative durations. Number one, it involves coding. So I like the low code, no code solutions. Um, it's a lot easier for beginners to grasp. Um, but again, this comes out of the box pretty much. So all you have to do is pretty much right here, these, these uh, forward slashes, that just means that this is commented out. So if you don't know code, that's what that means. And it kind of has that green text to it. Um, so the variable is days and it equals seven. So that's our seven business days. And then it's telling us here, it's explained to us that it has to be in um, 12 or after 12, then it's, you know, we're going to add one more day, right? So we have that here. So basically you would just change this to 12 p.m. Um, and then uh, here is our, our target, right? So this would be 5 p.m. Uh, for those of us who are in the U.S., and if you're working abroad, then you do 1,700 military time. Um, and, yeah, it would just uh, it would show up that way in the SLA, and I'm going to show you in just a second how that works. So then uh, let's take a look at the definition that I created. So I went to SLA definitions, created a new one. Uh, right here we have the name, which is exactly the same thing. And what I wanted to focus on was the duration type. So uh, I think I could just change this back to none. If I did none, then that would be your, your regular duration. But if I do um, this definition right here, basically this relative duration works on will come up. And then you have to select SLA record or task record. I selected SLA. And then uh, if we had a schedule source, uh, we could go ahead and plug that in. So I'm just going to say run a 24-7, but it, you know, if you think about it um, with the schedule, we're just basically defining a target date. Okay, so seven days from now, this thing needs to be done. If it's not, then it's busted, and you cannot pause it. And the reason why you can't pause it, and this is one of the reasons why I don't like relative durations, um, because people always want to pause it. And, well, what happens if you put it in pause and you get to that seven days? Out of the box, if you look at the pause condition, you're not able to use uh, the relative duration. So see right here, the pause condition is grayed out. We cannot use it because the SLA engine, remember the SLA is an automated task. And when we're programming the SLA using the condition builder, we're telling it what to do in different circumstances. So if it gets to um, that date, um, and then let's say it's still paused, or we wanted to have it in pause status, you probably could have an instance where you have negative time, so which obviously does not exist, but people don't think of it that way because this thing is a finite amount of time is what we're saying. And I've seen it on the community plenty of times where people say, I want to use pause with it, but the what is the SLA engine supposed to do then when you get to that date and it's still on pause? Does it stay paused? Is it supposed to uh, be a breach? Uh, so that's, that's one reason why um, when you're using this, you don't have a pause condition in the, in the SLA setup. So 
I set one up saying priority is one, critical, and then I did a dot walk. I love doing the dot walk, and I love SLAs that are based on the callers. And why? Because with incident, you have to remember that an incident will open up and the caller will say, oh, my laptop's not working. Well, okay, then you find out really it's a server that went down. So how many times have you reassigned it by that point? And each time you have to take into account that if you put assignment group in your definition, um, this SLA might get canceled depending on how you set it up. Um, if you set it up to pause, you're going to have a bunch of pauses going on. So obviously that can't happen with relative duration. So I like to keep SLAs um, aligned with the things that will not change the most, um, meaning on the form. So usually the customer is going to stay the same. I would say 99.9% .9 of the time it's going to stay the same. Um, configuration item, you can also probably base it on that. Um, so that those are just a couple of the ideas that I'll throw out there when you're configuring these things. Because remember, an SLA is an agreement between the organization and the customer, not the assignment group. So, sorry for that little rant, but I am going to be speaking at knowledge on this very topic. So, we have caller.city, and the way I did that was, I'm just going to put it in, I'm just going to retrace it right now. We would do show-related fields, and then we'd go to caller. Is this coming up? And maybe it's a little frozen. Taking a second here. Yeah, my screen's frozen, unfortunately. Well, since we're waiting for that, oh, there we go. Uh, since we're waiting for that, I'm going to also mention that my friend Matt Rado, um, who is P he's, uh, the CEO of uh, Valiant Solutions, he's looking for um, ISSOs and assessors um, to support federal government customers. So he's looking for people on a W-2 basis. And if you are interested in it um, and you can get a clearance and all that stuff, then um, please contact either him or I on LinkedIn and you can reference this video. Um, and also, I had a couple of developers that are looking for a couple of positions right now. One has about seven and a half years of experience in IT and three and a half with ServiceNow. And the other one's about to forward me um, her resume. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Also, if you need SLA consulting um, performed, I'm more than happy to do that. So um, going back to this, we would find the caller and then remember the arrow to user fields and we would find city. And then one thing I had to do was I went to the user form and city was not on the list. So what did I have to do? This is from another video. I had to configure form design. And when I did that, the form came up and city was one of the, the ones at the top. And then all you would do is just drag and drop and then you could save it. Like the save button will light up over here and then you could save it. So I'm not going to waste a lot of time on that. I'm just going to leave and keep it the way it is. But I just wanted to note that because sometimes when you're doing these dot walks and if this wasn't filled in on the form, then it wouldn't trigger, right? So um, now that that's out of the way, we noted the pause condition um, is not, not happening with relative duration. Also time zone source. So take this into consideration also. I think I talked about this in the video on scheduling um, or SLA schedules and that you might have someone that's in France or UK or whatever it is, um, and but the SLA doesn't care about that. Maybe it, it's looking at the CI. So that's one thing that you want to make your customers aware of um, to a certain degree. So um, stop condition I did is one of, resolve, close, canceled. Great. And I almost never put state in the start condition. I'll put it in the pause or stop conditions. Um, that's just the, the way I usually set them up because I'm running a condition type of default here. So, Mr. Tudor is from Fort Lauderdale, like myself, and we're going to go ahead and open up an incident. And, and let's just review what this says here in the, um, in, in the code. So basically, if it's after 12, it's going to add another day. So what time is it now? It's 2.49 p.m. So technically, there should be, I guess, eight days, right? So it was that, uh, if we look at the calendar, um, let's pull that up. So I don't think it's going to be right here on March 3rd. And also, I know that because I just did one as a test. So I'm going to hit save. And let's let this little gem uh, do its thing. And we'll scroll down to the related lists. And since we have a priority one and 
Fort Lauderdale is in the user's profile. Looks like it fired off that task SLA. Yay. Okay, so now we have our SLA definition here. And remember that with the task SLA related list, you can put in, uh, you, you can make the list however you want. You don't have to have these values in there. So here we go. Um, March 3rd, 5 p.m. Beautiful. Now, let's say we wanted to say if it's in by, let's just change this. And let's say we're going to change this value to, I don't know, let's make it 4 p.m., right? So I'm going to change this. Um, if it's before 4 p.m., you know, it's always good to, to note this stuff out, right, so that other people know what's, what's happening here. Um, so we're going to say if it's uh, before 1600. Now remember, these notes aren't, they don't impact the code, but I just want to do that so that way in case another person comes in here later on when I'm gone, you know, it's best practice to do that so that way they understand what's going on. So I've seen work in the past where there's no notes on it and you're just piecing through this stuff like you have no idea what's going on. So now what I'm going to do is, um, and that's already saved, now I'm going to open up another one here and we'll see the difference. Let's click save. So now it should be one day before uh, because so it should be the 2nd of March. And let's scroll down here. Seven days it fired, great. There you go, 2nd of March. All right, I believe we just unlocked the power service now. My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions. Thank you and have a great day.